Welcome back to another episode. Today, we're going to take a closer look at four stocks on my watch list for potential buys this week. Like many of you, I put money in my account on a weekly basis. Every single week, either looking for new investments or old investments to increase my overall position size. And like I mentioned, today, we're going to take a closer look at four stocks. The first one's going to be a large mega tech giant. The second is actually going to be an ETF. And the last two are going to be growth stocks. So a little bit for everybody who kind of wants to get some idea of maybe some stocks to keep on their radar. I do want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and make sure to check out fool.com slash Jose to get the top 10 stocks to buy right now. All right, the first company we're going to take a closer look at is Meta Platforms, ticker META. Uh, formerly known as Facebook, we can see in the past year to date, the stock is down roughly 67%. Obviously, the market has been pretty good lately. We can see from that bottom we saw earlier in November, stocks are up 23.5%. But in the past month, the stock is still down roughly 15%. There are a lot of things that I like about Meta Platforms. One is their financials. And the company is investing a lot in artificial intelligence and form of discovery for their platforms, which I think is necessary. So a lot of investments in things like data sensors and numerous kind of semiconductor products unfortunately this is kind of hurting financials uh, especially when you take a closer look at those quarterly numbers i mean we can see here in trailing 12 months cash flow from operations has definitely kind of taken a nice swing on the opposite side but trailing 12 months is still roughly 54 billion dollars while the company is investing in the metaverse uh we know this is not where a bulk of their investments are going to their bulk of their investments are going into those other products that i previously mentioned uh, we can see the company has roughly 41 billion dollars in cash and short-term investments pretty strong about 10 billion dollars in long-term debt so plenty of cash plenty of cash flow from operations and we can see unfortunately because of the kind of headwinds the advertisement market is seeing revenue is actually down roughly four percent compared to a year ago obviously this is a market that can continue to see numerous headwinds especially with the current macroeconomic events but personally i think meta platforms has huge kind of opportunity in just the advertising space especially with kind of that artificial intelligence and machine learning move i mean most recently meta platforms announced more features to kind of uh, monitor monetize WhatsApp um, and kind of add more to their advertisement and e-commerce solutions. The other thing is Meta Platforms is also getting great traction on Reels. And during their earnings call, they also mentioned that pay to messaging is growing great traction. Uh, so they're able to kind of monetize new solutions. I do believe this is a market that once the advertisement turns around, Meta is going to turn around at a very, very high pace. Uh, so I'm super excited. Meta Platforms is the first stock. The second one I mentioned is an ETF. And you guys know me, huge, huge semiconductor e e investor. And sometimes I don't like to kind of just buy individual stocks. My growth stocks in the semiconductor market already represent a high portfolio or position size in my portfolio. So instead, what I want to do is take a closer look at maybe uh etf where i get to get diversified a little bit get a little bit more of the value plays get a little bit more of the dividend plays and i really like this ticker etf from invesco phlx semiconductor etf the ticker is SOXQ. This is a brand new ETF. Inception date was actually June of 2021. So a little bit over a year ago. Number of holdings is 30. Even though this is a new ETF, the kind of it, it does follow an index fund, a semiconductor index fund to be exact. Even though the ETF is new, the overall fund that it actually follows is not. And the expense ratio for this ETF is actually pretty cheap, sitting at 0.19%. Also, if you are enjoying the episode so far, make sure to hit the thumbs up as it does help me grow my overall audience. If you want to support a little bit more, make sure to subscribe using my link at fool.com slash Jose. Finally, if you want to learn more about the semiconductor market, make sure to check out my new channel, the upcoming number one semiconductor podcast in the world, weekly episodes episode three was just released so if we keep looking at this fund we can see some of their top 10 holdings are some great companies texas instrument right i want to say more of a, a value play here in the semiconductor market same with broadcom then you have kind of the growth style like nvidia qualcomm amd and you have kind of the manufacturing like asml holding and applied materials so we can see they definitely hit different markets from all growth to value to dividend place. So I really, really enjoy this ETF a lot. Not much more I can say. 
ETFs, in my opinion, are a great way to kind of get exposure, especially in this market. The third stock is going to be now a growth stock, and this is going to be CrowdStrike Holdings, ticker CRWD. We can see years to date, the stock is down roughly 31, uh, roughly 31.6%. Let's just jump into the fundamentals real quick. The company is expected to report their earnings on November 29th, so I believe next week. Uh, so we're going to take a closer look at their second quarter earnings. But during their second quarters, they did mention that one, they are raising guidance. We can see cash flow from operations continues to go up. It's now almost a one-to-one -one ratio to its long-term debt, which I think is pretty, pretty bullish. We can also see the company has plenty of cash and short-term investments, roughly $2.4 billion compared to that $700 million in long-term debt. We can see the company is not it's kind of decelerating that revenue growth, but still most recent quarter, which ended June 30th, was up 58% year over year. Annual recurring revenue grew 59% in that most recent quarter year over year to $2.14 billion. They added 1,700 net new subscribers and cash flow from operations was up a nice amount. So overall, companies looking pretty, pretty healthy. The cyber market, the cybersecurity market, in my opinion, is one with numerous tailwinds. And most recently, we can see here, on November 17th, CrowdStrike was named the global leader in cloud security. The final company here we're going to take a closer look at is Block, ticker SQ formerly known as Square. We can see this is one that has definitely taken quite a hit as well, down 62.2% in the past year to date. In the past month, it's actually up about 8.5%. And from its kind of low in the past month, it's up over 14%. So we can see the market has been very, very volatile. For me, Block gets me super excited. If you're kind of looking for that exposure in the fintech market and also in kind of the e-commerce solution one way or another, we can see on November 9th, top Canadian brand partnered with Afterpay just in time for the holidays. Uh, the company recently reported earnings. And to me, this is a company that overall gross profits continue to grow. And that's super, super impressive, especially with the overall kind of macroeconomics we're seeing. Main reason, Cash App, their fintech services continue to go up, up 51% year over year on a gross profit basis. Square gross profit was up 29% year over year. And it was also up on a quarterly basis. Again, macroeconomics, I would have expected this to kind of take a quite a hit. It. Gross profits are still super, super strong. Adjusted EBITDA numbers are still also pretty strong, growing uh, growing quarter over quarter and year over year. So again, this these two are more, the last two that I mentioned are more kind of growth stocks. Uh, so definitely understand the risk behind them. But we can see overall companies are doing well. Revenue might not be the best way to take a closer look at Block because they do get that revenue from Bitcoin. So that can take a hit there. But if we take a closer look at Block and their financials, we can see balance sheets looking okay. Nothing too, too crazy. They definitely have a nice amount of debt, but they have plenty of cash at hands. So these are four stocks on my radar this week. I might purchase, usually I purchase two or three of them depending on how they do by the end of the week. Uh, but all of them, in my opinion, are definitely ones investors should at least keep an eye out and do a little bit more research on. So take care, have a good day, and see you next time.